So a little bit of a hot start there, but you know, Jeremy, he's smooth, so we're going to flow right along with the price of everything. And for all of you who continue to watch Morning Barbados religiously every day, we say thank you very much. And because of that, you know that we've been discussing mutual funds with Jeremy. And I gave him an assignment. And believe me, I'm a very hard marker. He's back. Morning, Jeremy. Morning, hey, Professor Jeremy. Good morning. <laughs> <laughs> morning, ladies. Well, definitely I just went and I did well, put down some nice notes. I've got a very comprehensive list of questions that we can go through today for anybody in Barbados who's basically looking to invest in mutual funds and also any other types of investment so they can be lumped together in a sense. So let's make sure that they go and get a pen or a pencil or slip that V. What do you call it again? You know those little black tapes that they used to record stuff on? VCR. Something like that. <laughs> wow. Try not it, to say it, you, right. Stick it in and record this session because it's going to be good information. Was it a difficult thing to do? No, it's yeah. not. Actually, another acronym comes to mind. Um, if anybody's interested, I would ask the, the guys in the back to pull up um, the websites that I basically got this stuff from. The thing uh, is, these are standardized questions, actually. Uh, suggested by the SEC, another right. big acronym, Securities Exchange Commission of the U.S. And as you know, there are tons of financial scandals that happen in the U.S. every day. Mm. So the guys at the SEC really, really, really got together and put together a nice comprehensive list this, that was, are standard. Was this post all the scandals or was this, or you think this was around before? I well, people I, just didn't know. I wasn't long, around long enough to know if it was post, I must be honest. But I can say that they're just pretty standard and what I have learnt over the years is that this stuff works. I okay. don't know when it came on, but the fact is it's good questions. I mean, some simple questions for products, and I'm going to read off of this, guys, today, right? So you've got to excuse me if I'm not looking directly at you for a bit. Um, basically, is this an investment company registered with the central bank? If you go on the central bank's website, for instance, you can see financial companies. They have to be registered with the central bank. So this is a must. This you is can't have a company and say, well, you know what? I am registering with the central bank. Well, you can't but sell mutual funds unless you, you invest. So, with so something's <laughs> very wrong if they're not. <laughs> pretty, pretty, pretty. Better not answer no to that question. Yeah, you don't want another trick off, huh? <laughs> um, is this investment project product? The product, no, which mm -hmm. is different. The actual fund registered with the financial authorities. So you had the supervisor of insurance at one point, for instance. Um, does this investment match my investment goals? And no, you have to clearly tell the guy or tell the investment manager what your goals are and see if these things fall in line, yeah? And when we talk about the goals here, yeah, we're talking about the things that we talk about, like if you want to make a lot of money or you just want to, if you want to get, like Katrina was saying, returns all the time yeah. and just want to rest it down or, or you want to leave it. Mm -hmm. right, Correct. So that's your goals that you're going to give them. Yeah, you've got to be very clear about that from the beginning, from the get-go. And I think that's an important point to make here, Jeremy. I'm kind of giving the people who are slow to get the pen a little chance, you know? <laughs> smart, smart, smart. That's, that's an important point to make. I mean, if you are not sure what you want to get out of your investment, you're going to confuse whoever you try to hire. Agreed. So you have to kind of, I mean, I'm, I'm asking if you think this is wise just to sit down, study your head, and be really honest with yourself about what you want to get out of it before you attempt to access anyone's services. Mm. Mm. I, would be, I would say it the other way around. You should try to, well, know what you're about and then be clear in your mind how you're going to go about it. Because okay. really, it's, just, it's all about the approach. Again, I like my data and analogies. <laughs> I think everybody has in mind what they want out of um, uh, an investment. Even if they don't have enough information, they have in mind what risk they're willing to take on. Mm -hmm. So it's about the approach and about the right person to be able to deliver it. So Because you can't have a generic approach. Each fund is different. Even if they propose to give you the same type of investment, there's got different investment managers managing these investments. So a lot of it has to do with the approach and whether they're very transparent and willing to help you make the best decision for you, even if it results in a loss of a sale. Mm. And actually part of that, that is actually part of the criteria, part of the questions you should ask. Well, they have pens by now, Jeremy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. you guys got pens? So Fancy pens, pens, laptops, iPads, whatever. I would suggest they try to record me as well. <laughs> <laughs> we, we can't <laughs> suggest that. Oh, yes. I'm sorry. I'm a bad boy. All right, so like, how will this investment make money? A lot of people never ask that question. Um, will you be making money, you the fund manager, via dividends, interest, capital gains? So the three things I spoke about, the income strategy, the capital gain strategy, Income could be dividends, income could be from coupons, from bonds and whatnot. Um, you also would want to look at what are the total fees to purchase. Last week I well, introduced two words that people might not be familiar about, front loading and back loading. Those are the basic <coughs> fees, those are like commission and, and basically sales fees. So you come in, you for instance, Cassandra's got a fund and you very well want to invest in Cassandra and you give her the money but she's like, okay, you need to pay me at least for me to let this go through, right? 
and that's the front loading. The back loading is when you want to redeem your shares or redeem your mutual funds, and you have to pay her an administrative fee, because obviously, to redeem, she has to do an administrative okay. process to ensure you get back your money. Um, so so you what is that question yeah. number that you have to ask there? Sorry, the question is just, what are the total fees uh, to total purchase, fees. maintain, and sell this investment? Uh. So the maintenance, no, that, those are the investment manager fees. I spoke about benchmark fees, for instance, which basically means if the investor, well, sorry, investment manager is able to beat his expected or his anticipated return in any given year, he gets an extra piece of the uh, What do you the get? <laughs> what do you get? Well, you get the remainder. <laughs> you get the remainder and then up to the benchmark. Right, okay. um, let's see, what else? How liquid is this investment? That's very important because that determines how soon you can sell. Okay, liquid means how much cash money do they have on hand if you have to redeem, let's say, within the period. Some funds are very closed, whereby they do not expect you to redeem um, years later, sometimes five to seven years. I've seen some locally that do that. On the other hand, you can take the stuff and sell on the secondary markets, but like the Barbados Stock Exchange, but very well, those markets aren't very liquid are very active, so you might not find a counterparty to buy the stuff from you. So you might have to know from the beginning if you can redeem from the mutual fund earlier than expected. Let's say if they expect it's a five-year fund, or you can very well just hold hold out. And Before you go to the next question, sorry, go ahead. they're putting up a website for you. Which one is this? Yes, um, that one, I have the short code for it. It's basically bit.ly slash pzc. Q for four way. That's basically um, the steps that you should be taking right now in terms of asking investment managers and mutual funds managers basic questions. They're consolidated. I basically brought down the questions, and you can get that from the SEC website. But I think that might come up a bit later. Mm -hmm. um, but that one is very comprehensive, and it also gives you the reason why these questions are important. So, oh. guys, if you miss what I'm saying today, hence why I wasn't too conscious about the things mm -hmm. I've given you two resources that you can very well go online, download it, it's free, it's public information, and you can have your explanations as to why you should ask these questions. So you can listen to me in public, might sound more familiar when you do reference that um, particular website. Let that me ask you a question now, Jeremy. If I walk into a mutual fund office with a big uh, manila folder of <laughs> stuff, was that a... Is that going to be a problem for the people, or they welcome the fact that you come prepared with questions and that sort of thing? You I think a fund manager might be like put off by that? Now, this is a personal choice. Maybe they might be put off, but would you want somebody, want to deal with somebody who doesn't have your best interests at heart? And it might not be an indicator. It's you having your own best interests at heart. <coughs> Thank you. So it has to be you at first. And I think they should love a customer who's very fully informed. Mm -hmm. I think so, because you know what? It might mean that they don't have to deal with a lot of pressure later on. Right, so it should be like the Carfax advertisement. If you start talking mm -hmm. and then they start trying to push you in another direction, you should no. Signal should go off. Basically, I would not even deal with those guys. Right. Well, you have started us off giving us some great advice, and now we're going to invite you to call us at 228-5562 or 228-5563. Feel free to send us an email or a Facebook message if you have any questions for Jeremy Stephen on the questions you should ask before you start a relationship, because that's what it is, really, really? a relationship with an investment uh, fund manager of, mm. of any kind. Um, you have another step, now that we're clear. Well... Yeah, basically, now we're getting into risk. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You need to ask the question, what are the specific risks associated with this investment? So a good example would be, what's the maximum I can lose on this investment? Nobody ever asked that. Mm. What is the maximum? Well, you have to because if you're taking on a mutual fund, mutual fund is not a bond. You're not guaranteed anything unless they say so. Mm -hmm. So, for instance, there are some mutual funds, very recently issued mutual funds, uh -huh. that say they protect the principal. Uh -huh. Okay, which means, in essence, you get back your money. But in real terms, and this is something the central bank loves to say, in real terms, you don't get back what you really put in. Think about it this way. If I have a dollar in my hand right now, how much is it worth by the end of the year? Uh, well, it can't buy the same thing. Inflation comes into account, and, and the opportunity living. cost, yeah, cost of living, the um, opportunity cost of interest or passing up, saving that dollar. So very well in, I think... And again, this is a very soft analysis, conjecture really, but a dollar is really worth nothing more than a couple, like 90 cents um, by the end of one year, given current interest rates. And you assume that they're compounded. So that's just me doing quick math in my head, all right, right. right? And what this means is that if you have your principal protected, 
okay, and you get back, let's say you put $1,000 in and you get back $1,000 in five years, it's not really worth, worth it. it. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's not really worth it. However, that's just a security measure. That's insurance. It gives you something back. You haven't lost everything. That's what that tells you. So the maximum amount you might lose is really the opportunity cost, what you've passed up, saving that in a safer account. Mm -hmm. So you can calculate that for yourself if you wish. But then also they offer minimum guaranteed returns. That's another thing that you should look for, minimum guaranteed returns. So do you offer any minimum guaranteed returns? No. Well, it means that the risk even is multiplied or accentuated as a result, right? No. They also offer what? What's the best way to put it? No fees for the first couple of years because that adds on to the amount that you get back. Your principal sometimes is charged mm -hmm. um, if you front load, meaning if you have to pay somebody to put you into a fund, basically. Again, that adds to the amount that you get back in the future. So these risks have to be, um, well, that's not really a risk, but these costs have to be upfront. You also have to know what markets that they're playing in. Let's say, for instance, they go into the dreaded, dreaded, dreaded derivative market and they have no equities, no bonds in their um, portfolio, the investment manager that is. You're very well telling that yourself that you can lose all but the principal if it's principal protected. Actually, if anybody, go ahead and listen carefully, all right? If anybody says that your principal is going to be protected, but they're investing fully in the derivative market and currencies, they're basically telling you a lie, and they think you should get over there. So Can is I that a question, sorry. too? I, this is going to be quick, I'm sure. Is that another one of the questions that you should ask? Um, what market are you going to... Yep, make? because that ties into the risk. Okay. Each market has risk. Equity markets have risk. Equities go up, go down. And depending on what strategy um, you implement, you can go up a lot or you can go down a lot and lose everything, mm. okay? Um, <laughs> currencies, that's another thing. Another risk in currencies, political risk, because if you're trading currencies, let's say if you wanted to make some quick money on the um, <laughs> on US dollars. I mean, we're fixed, so you can't make it. But right now, the emerging market currencies are booming because everybody's trying to get into China, everybody's trying to get into Iraq, wherever there are commodities. But these countries tend to have high political risk. Mm. So at any moment, um, their currencies can go crashing down. All that has to happen is that Fox News or somebody has to say something bad, and in one single day, your earnings can go down. Wow. So you might have bought up a, a whole bunch of, um, let's see, what's a good one? A dinar. So that's from Iraq. You buy up some dinar, for instance, because there's good trading going on between the U.S. and Iraq, as most of us do know. And all of a sudden, Sudan Hussein is resurrected from the dead. Uh, <laughs> Bas wow. Basically, you're going to lose a lot crash. of money. <laughs> yeah, it's a big crash. You might be better off holding U.S. dollars and then buy <laughs> if you're interested in buying something in Iraq. So if it is that you've got an investment manager that somehow believes that Iraq is the next big place, because it could very well be, and hasn't protected himself, diversified, investing in probably Russia, which is another political risk, investing in Singapore, just to spread the wealth around, then you very well stand a chance to lose all your money in one single day if the wrong news story pushes out. Sorry. I have one question uh, that kind of tacks back to minimum guaranteed returns. Is there a range within which they should fall, or does it depend on how much you have put in? Because mm. you know, the words minimum and guaranteed would, would, would appear to lock you into a particular kind of return, but not so much. Well, it locks you into a minimum return, <laughs> meaning that you should at least guarantee, and you could do your financial projections that this amount is going to come back to you once the strategy works. That's the catch, because... One big risk nobody ever remembers is that um, the investment manager could very well be set up for fraud, mm -hmm. right? And then the fund becomes illiquid. Basically, uh, creditors might have to come in because some people borrow money to start up. You it's lose. Yeah, mm -hmm. thank you. And he might have offered minimum returns. I, I think that's what he sold to the West Indian cricketers, didn't he? But the fact was. <laughs> so, is, so is there a range? Is it, so does the range of the minimum guaranteed returns depend on the initial investment and on the solvency of the, of the, of the investment fund manager? I would say the second one. It mm. depends on solvency, but doesn't really depend on the first one. Okay. I'll tell you why. Um, Can you tell us why after we take no a break? No problem. Wonderful. <laughs> we are talking the price of everything and the steps you should take and the questions you should ask when you're getting into investment and who to ask what of. Jeremy Stevens is our financial consultant. We're going to take a very short break and we'll be back here on Morning Barbados.